Little cone head. How are you going to catch a ball with that? How are you planning on... See? Sit down, cone head. Just because you're high on pain meds doesn't mean you can run around be crazy. Hey, you're supposed to be resting. I want to play frisbee. I know you want to play frisbee. It's a sad excuse for a frisbee though. No, we're not playing. No. Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be taking you through what's in my Land Cruiser. And I feel like I sort of did this in my overview video, but a lot of you guys are still asking what I carry in my toolboxes, glove box, just little things like that. So I've taken everything out of my car when I cleaned it for mold after all the rain we had here. All right, so I'm just gonna do a quick repair. My aircon belt gets loose and I would rather suffer in the heat than drive around with my aircon belt squeaking because everyone knows my car. This is not good. <laughs> I'm gonna fix that. I'll show you why, because the adjuster is actually broken. So eventually over time, it just unscrews itself. Also, I've been getting a lot of questions lately about where I get certain things that are in my video that I don't comment on. So this hat is Bush Life Oz. Check them out, they have a cool Instagram. And these are knobby, and I have no idea where these pants are from. I have a bazillion denim pants from somewhere. Okay, this video is just super determined not to be filmed. It's raining in Townsville. I know you guys think it must rain all the time because we had super big floods, but it doesn't. All right, we're just gonna do it in the rain because why not? And also I've just taken my spare tire. It used to sit underneath the chassis rail, like in the hang down, wind down, wind back up factory spot but when you're driving through sand and especially sand fluffy sand that's been driven through before it becomes sort of like a plow <laughs> I'm gonna try and put it somewhere else for now um, and then when the new tray setup gets done it'll have a home that won't be hanging underneath I really need to get a step <laughs> Alright, so I'm just loosening the pulley on the front so that I can adjust my belt. I'm just trying to tighten this up without snapping this adjuster belt because it's quite old. Pretty sure I got it second hand at a wreckage. And it's probably gonna snap. So that sound right there is the snapped bolt head falling but not hitting the ground. And this is me swearing internally as I come to the realisation I won't have aircon for a while. So we won't be doing my aircon because that's just not going to happen. Alright, so I've got two belts that run um, the alternator, the fan, water pump, all of that. And then the single belt on the outside is just for my aircon. So I've taken that off. I'm going to get a new pulley, new adjuster bolt. Hold it. adjustment bolt or the locking bolt for my alternator are you right it's very loud it's broken out as well <laughs> so I'll get me one of those so all I'm doing is going to lever the alternator out which tightens the belt quickly nip up the um, locking bolt all right so this was gonna be a what's in my Land Cruiser video but it's kind of turned into like more repairs and now I'm covered in shit again. This is my aircon adjustment bolt. So 
that's not what you want. It's just not gonna work anymore. <laughs> Alrighty, so welcome to what this video is originally going to be about, which is what's in my Land Cruiser. We'll start with what's in the cab that I didn't get to show you last time. Don't keep anything under the seat. I keep a pair set of shoes because I have a habit of never wearing shoes. Behind the seats, I've got my bars for the jack, a sunshade, um, my Toyota toolkit. That's pretty much all that's down there and I keep a big bottle of water. It's always just good to have water. And my jack is there as well. So it's got a little holder for it. Um, stubby coolers. How cool is this stubby cooler? I don't keep anything in the ashtray because it disappears into the abyss. Glove box. Emergency sunnies in case I forget mine. Always keep baby wipes or toilet paper because you just never know when you've got to go. Uh, beef jerky because like that never goes off. Lollies, two-way radio just for people in case I'm on a convoy or something and they don't have a UHF. My spare aerial which changes depending on terrain but I never change it over. Pen, charger for the UHF. Um, this is just a little toolkit. It was like super cheap. Ha! <laughs> from super cheap. That's funny. It just sort of comes in handy, um, especially if I've taken my toolbox out of my toolbox. Toolbox out of my toolbox. Then I'll just, at least I've got something. Just a notebook. I think this has got stuff in it from Fraser. This is how I like Tetris plan my tray <laughs> when I go to Fraser. I think it's still got some Man Ray stickers in there. Map of Fraser. Whoop. Oh yeah, so this is pretty cool. So obviously I don't wear this because it's ginormous and I have a watch on. But it's good to keep in the car. It's got, that's a can opener on there. So it's got a little fold out knife part and you just go around the can opening it up. This rope is actually paracord. It can actually hold a fair amount of weight. You get a flint to start fires. And then you can't really see, but in the middle there's a fishing hook and um, fishing line braided into this. So I don't know if you're like super keen, you can unravel it and start fishing. This is also a handcuff key. I've never tried it. I, I don't know if it's like a universal thing, but I don't know, that, that, that was kind of cool. I cannot remember where I got this from. If I find it out, I'll put it in the link down below. So this is my workshop manual and owner's manual, obviously. I have no idea why it's holding on it, <laughs> but it's got the warranty and servicing records. It's actually not a lot of servicing records in there. Um, it's got the original receipt and like who originally bought it, which was a company in Newcastle, I'm pretty sure. Pretty much what's in my cab. I have two of these big toolboxes. They're from Super Cheap and they're Tool Pro brand. I got them on sale. I can't remember what the price of them was, but they are really good price on sale. It's pretty good because it's got a shelf up here and it's pretty deep inside so I can still sit things up. Always got to have stubby killers everywhere. So this is from Snatch and um, it's got double magnets so it can hold a bit. I can happily say it will hold a bit. They're just on struts. That's a bit good. A lot of people don't like these and to be honest they stick. I don't like the other ones either, the ones like you twist and turn. So I don't know, I'm, I'm happy. So this is just a XTM bag from BCF um, for recovery and it's just got spare shackles, snatch block, tree trunk protector, winch extension strap. Those two I probably haven't used too often because I haven't run a winch for about five years. This is the snatch strap that we'll need replacing soon and it's also got the hitch as well which is a pain because I've got to bash my toe ball out it does not like to come out easy um, I also keep a puncture repair kit haven't used it yet pro Crip jerry can I like the plastic ones a bit better because they're lighter I can carry them if you've ever done jerry can carries metal versus plastic you would go metal 
is just too heavy <laughs> and they don't get hot don't ding as easy so I like the plastic I also carry a lot of spare belts one is for my aircon that will go back on when I replace that pulley I've seen a lot of people use drive belts for a lot of interesting things holding on tie rods <laughs> broken off tie rods for example but to not be able to drive because you've simply thrown a belt or belt snapped like you can't drive <laughs> if you're your aircon belt sure but the drive belt is just not gonna work and it's something pretty simple and light that you can just keep plenty of I have these specifically designed accurately bended tools for just in case I'm not gonna tell you what they're for but if you're smart I'm sure you'll figure it out <laughs> I try to balance the weight out between the two toolboxes now. I used to put it all in one side. If you're driving in Australia, we drive on the left. When you pull over, you want everything on that left so that you're not going out onto the highway to open up toolboxes. So I used to keep everything on the left-hand side. And then both my left-hand springs sagged. And it's not a lot of weight, but I don't know, over time it must have just been enough weight it's pulled the springs down. So I got them hot reset. And now I try and even it out between the two. So you would have seen the tool kit that I got for Christmas because I'm a spoiled gal. Uh, so that sort of has everything. I also keep a fire extinguisher. Just think it's a good thing to carry. Um, I always keep spare coolant um, which is just a premix and you can just pour it in. So you're not pouring in just straight coolant which changes your percentage and you're not just pouring in water which has all sorts of funky additives in it these days so this is the lucas power steering stop leak very highly recommend this stuff it is amazing i had a leaking steering box so it would it would chew through a whole bottle of power steering fluid in like a week and it would just be the most horrible noise when you run dry at power steering fluid. It doesn't even become hard, it just becomes super noisy because it's the power steering box. It was just leaking straight down onto my leaf spring, which did stop the rust. I think I top it up once a year maybe. You can get rebuild kits for power steering boxes, but if the actual housing has worn out, putting new seals in it isn't gonna do anything, it's just gonna keep leaking. And a reconditioned, not even a new one, a reconditioned steering box is like $600. I don't know about you guys, but I hate buying stuff for my car that's not an improvement. When you've got to buy a necessity thing, a power steering box, <laughs> you can't buy an upgraded power steering box. So it's good like when your battery goes, you can buy a better battery. You can buy one with high amp hours. When your power steering box, you're like, damn it, I can't, this is not an upgradable part. <laughs> yeah, so I just use um, Penrite's diesel inject cleaner and I just keep it so that when I fuel up, I can just add some in. It's great, like my car doesn't, hardly blow any smoke it's got over 600,000 kilometers on it I've always sort of used injector cleaner but I don't think it's something you can just use once and then wait 10 years and then use it again like it's something you've got to kind of do all the time another thing I always carry is super cheap multimeter it's just something so handy to have and once you know how to use it properly without damaging anything um, it can be really good this is also the puncture punk punch set <laughs> can't talk <laughs> that I used for doing my diff seal um, and last I have my compressor which is just from four drive super center I think it's pretty crazy it does 300 liters per minute or something but it will run a rattle gun so if you've got super strong wheel nuts but you've just got an impact driver just chuck that on the end of this and rattle gun them up it take a while to build back air but <laughs> the only thing is you've got to kind of leave it out for a bit afterwards because it does get super hot putting out that much air but not being a large compressor doesn't have the cooling capacity but other than that it's pretty good so yeah that's like the main sort of stuff that i keep in the toolboxes i definitely keep some freewheeling hubs spare that's a good thing to have i think they're normally the first to go unless your name's denny and then it's your cv but eh. if i was going on a big long trip I'd be taking a, a lot more. Probably a few more spare parts and just emergency stuff. I don't really run the tray sides anymore because they're super annoying and not cool. So 
Yeah. Having a ute, I always carry a bucket of ratchet straps. It's just because I don't have the tray sides on, so you've got to tie your stuff down. I was going to roll them up super neat for you guys, but that wouldn't have been real life. This is real life. I ain't going to roll them up. It takes too long. I've got a spare thermostat. I've got spare halogen globes because I run LEDs, just in case there's ever an issue with those. I've just got like a heap of spare H4s. Spare parts for my bearings, spare horn. I didn't even know I had that. The door handle as well. That's that box of stuff. This is a spare water pump and a spare timing belt. And look, if you're changing a water pump on the side of the road, that's crazy. That is pretty much it. I've actually got to put my spare tire back up. hope you guys enjoyed seeing what's inside my car. Got a few exciting things coming up. It's just over there, out of sight. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll already know what it is. I feel me and I'm gonna give you guys a quick little glimpse. But if you want to see everything, head over to my Instagram because that's where everything's gonna be. You ready? All right. That's all you get. The last thing that I wanted to show you guys was give you a little look at things that are about to be on my car. This awning, Destination 4 Drive, really awesome bloke and he gave me this and I'm gonna trial it on my car. We'll be going on probably the roof rack and then it'll swing all the way around. Um, that's just instead of carrying a gazebo because I used to carry a gazebo. Car builders. These are the guys that I'm going through to do all of my soundproofing on the new cab, the heat proofing, all insulation type stuff. Um, and this is under bonnet, so you would have seen in my overview video that I really desperately needed a new under bonnet insulation. So that is going on and it's cut to size. These are my new flares. So they will be going on as well. So they're going to be a little bit more wider than what I run now. These are going to go with the awnings, Easy Anchor. I've seen them for so long and then I finally found a company. All you do is using your drill to put them down into the ground because I hate hammering in pegs. <laughs> Almost forgot. This will be going in the new cab. This is probably what I'm most excited for. So jump online and check out the Lost Tuning. These rock lights. And then I have a discount code. This is so exciting. So this is my new winch that will be going on my new bar. I will be doing a video for probably breaking those mods up a little bit. The winch and the rock lights I'll probably put on together. And I'll pop the discount codes down below as well for both of those. Alrighty guys, so it is a few days later from what you last saw. So I put a post up, I think a story and a poll on what sort of personalised plates I should get because I got a delivery the other day. This is the first place that everyone will see it. I had a nickname for the cruiser when I first got it, which was James, because my grandma used to always say, home James and don't spare the horses. And a four-wheel drive should always be able to get you home. I thought that was a good name, but over the years, I've sort of started calling him old boy. The cruiser's new number plates are... Old boy. And... To be honest, the, there was heaps more votes for Danny's because, and I think a lot of people said that because you can put them on, on another car, but to be honest, I'm never selling this car. And I know a lot of people say that, but this car is not worth anything. <laughs> it's not worth selling. I already have a big ass sign that says mine, not his. I don't need plates that say it's mine. Everybody already knows it's mine. I have a feeling, like if you were following this car, <laughs> And you saw those plates, you'd think it was an old guy driving. It's old boy, like someone's grandpa. And then you're just, boom! It's a young girl. Oh my god. Yeah. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, subscribe. Give it a like. Why not? Well, better get going. Borrow this, mate. Getting old. Oh yeah.